So you are welcome to this lecture. Um, we want to look at exponential form of a complex number. Okay. In previous lectures, we saw that we can write um, a complex number S Z in the form R, which is the modulus times cos of theta. Theta is the argument plus I sine of theta. All right. Now there is a formula called the Euler's formula. Okay, given by um, given by this, that if I have um, cos sine of theta plus i sine theta, I can actually write it as i to the power theta, and this is equal to cos sine of theta plus i sine theta. So that's Euler's formula. Okay, the powerful formula that uh, we use to write uh, complex numbers using this form. All right. So you can see how you get the exponential form of a complex number using Euler's formula. Right. We know that what is in brackets here can be written as this. Therefore, exponential form of any complex number z now can be written as r times this guy, but this is the same as i of theta. All right. So this equation, that equation there, is called is the exponential form of a complex number, and it's uh, it's very powerful. We see some of the usefulness of it. For instance, you see that things uh, simplify much, much, much more. Um, it's easy to simplify things uh, using this form compared to using that. For example. We saw that uh, if I have two complex numbers, z1, let's call that r1 e to the power i1, let z2 be equal to r2 e to the power i theta2 using exponential form. Then if you multiply these two complex numbers, what do you get? You're going to have z1 and z2, that is equal to this times that is r1 and r2. This is going to give me e to the i theta 1 multiplied by i theta 2. Okay? We have the same base, right? So if you are multiplying them, you can just add the um, exponents. So this is actually equal to r1, r2 e to the i into brackets theta 1 plus theta 2. So this says that if you multiply two complex numbers, right? In exponential form, what you get is that you get a product of the uh, modulus and then you also get a sum, right? The resulting argument is the sum of the individual arguments, which is the same as what we got when we multiply them using this form. Okay? But now you see that it's much, much easier to, uh, to derive that results when you use the exponential form of a complex number. In the same way, if you uh, divide them, z1, over z2, because you're going to have r1 over r2, r1 over r2, uh, and then have e to the theta 1 all over e to the i theta 2. And of course, this we can write as r1 over r2. This is divided, so when this goes up, this becomes minus. You see that? So this becomes e to the i. Now we're going to have theta 1 minus. Okay, minus theta 2. And that says that when you divide two complex numbers in polar form or exponential form, right, the resulting argument is the difference uh, of the two arguments in the complex number. Again, which is consistent with what we got already. Okay? But now it's much, much simpler. Instead of expanding distance and grouping stuff and using the um, trig identities, now it's much, much easier. Okay? So that is exponential form, um, exponential form of a complex number. We use we use this to do um, two examples. If I have time, we'll do one first, and if there's time, then uh, we'll do another example using using the exponential form of um, of a complex number. Okay. So let's let's look at these uh, examples. Express one express um, 
express cosine of theta and the sine theta in terms of the exponential terms, in terms of e to the i theta and e to the negative i theta. Hence, prove or show that, prove that I have um, a, I have uh, these simple examples here, cosine raised to the power 3, show that this you can write as 1 over 4 into cos 3 theta plus 3 cos theta, okay? And then the second one is sine squared theta, show that you can write this as 1 half into 1 minus cosine of theta. So these are formulas that we know, right, from trigonometry, right? This one is the easiest one. Now I want to prove that using uh, the exponential form of a complex number. Good. So what we do? So the first part of the question requires that we show that we can write cos theta and sine theta in terms of these guys. Okay. So let's use um, the formulas that we know. We know that e to the i theta using our, our Euler's formula can be written as cosine of theta plus i sine theta, right? But call this equation one. We also know you can write this as that's in place of theta put negative theta. This becomes the same thing, cos of negative theta x cos theta. This becomes minus, right? Sine of theta. Let's call this equation two. Now, if I add the two equations, this will add up, this will cancel out, right? So, 1 plus 2 is going to give me, uh, this and this will give me 2 cosine of theta. This is 0. This plus this will give me e to the i theta plus e to the minus i theta. Okay? So, this is important. Of course, this also means that I can replace, oh, uh, this is not 2, this is theta. Okay, this also means I can write cosine of theta as e to the i theta minus i theta divided by 2. So these two formulas are important. In actual fact, this is what we want, right? The question says we should find cos theta in terms of this. So that is this. Okay, now we can get that cosine by subtracting, right? Taking equation 1 minus equation 2. Then the cosine will vanish and then we'll have a tangent sign. So take 1 minus 2. This minus this will add up. So that will give me 2i sine theta is equal to this i minus that. That is e to the i theta minus i theta. Which implies that now I can write sine theta in terms of this minus divide by 2i, right? Then I get these two, um, these two formulas um, for sine and cosine in terms of exponential. All right? Good. So now that we have this relation, we want to use them to prove this and that. Okay? So we'll do this first, best time. We'll do this. Otherwise, you guys can try, can try this one. It should be straightforward. So let's try to prove the first one. Let me get rid of this. Um, so we have, we want to show that cos to the power 3 theta is equal to 1 over 4, cosine of 3 theta plus 3 cos theta. Okay? This is what we want to show. So how do we do that? We have, we have an expression for, um, Cosine of theta from here, which we can apply, right? So cos to the power 3, that means we raise this to the power 3. So using that relation there, cosine to the power 3 theta will be the same as, if you like, e to the theta minus i theta over 2. All of this will be raised to the power 3, right? Then we can manipulate this expression. 2 to the 3 is 8, so this is 1 over 8. I'll have e to the i theta plus e to the minus i theta raised to the power 3, 1 over 8. 
Now I can expand this using by linear expansions, right? So I have one, the coefficients will be one, three, three, one, right? This to the power three will be e to the power three i theta, okay? Three i theta. The next one will have a coefficient of three. Now this is squared, so I have two i theta multiplied by e to the minus i theta, all right? The next will have a coefficient of three as well. But now I'll just have e to the i theta. This guy will be squared. That is e to the negative 2 i theta. Then the last thing I'm going to test to the power 3, right? So you get, you get e raised to the power negative 3 i theta. Okay. Uh, we can simplify this further. We're going to have 1 over 8 into e to the 3 i theta. Three notes. This is two i theta. This is minus. When I add them, I'll just have e to the i theta. Okay. And this is three. This is negative i theta. All right. And I have e to the negative three i theta. Okay. Good. So now we can actually combine. Look, we can combine this and that. And we can combine these two times. Right. When we combine this and that, we can use this expression here. To simplify, see? So we can rewrite this as 1 over 8 into e to the 3 i theta plus this i and then 3 i theta, alright? Okay? And then plus this and this is 3, and do this into i theta minus i theta, okay? And then we come up here and use the fact that we're going to use the fact that 2, note that 2 cosine of theta is equal to e to the i theta plus e to the negative i theta. Okay? So we can use that. Which means that if I replace, if I replace theta with 3 theta, I'm going to have 3 i theta and 3 i theta here. You see that? So that this term here, these two terms, can be replaced by 2 cos 3 theta. Alright? And this guy, of course, would just be uh, 2 cos cosine of theta. You see this? So from here, I'm going to have cosine raised to the power 3 will just be equal to 1 over 8. And all these first two times you got be two cosine of three theta, right? And this this is two cos theta. The two multiplies this and have six plus six cosine of theta. Okay. So I'm gonna have I can pull out uh, two. So I'm gonna have one over four here, and then I just have cosine of three theta plus this is like three cosine of theta. Okay. So this is uh, this is actually what we wanted to show, right? We wanted to show that cosine to the power three theta can be, can be written as this using the exponential form of a complex of a complex. So we have actually proven that. Okay, good. So I'll I'll leave this here. Uh, you guys should use the same approach and try to prove sine square theta is equal to the second one, one half into one minus cosine of theta. Okay, so try it. Um, and then in our next uh, series of lectures, lectures, we want to look at finding the roots, the end roots um, of a complex number. Okay, so I will see you.